here, come on, come on guys, come on in. Hi, I'm James, a photographer and online media personality in Atlanta, Georgia. I live and work in my Castleberry Hill studio, and in my spare time, I love to cook. But being that I'm one of nearly 25 million Americans who lives in a food desert, it can be a challenge to find healthy and fresh ingredients in my neighborhood. This show is my way of sharing some of my favorite home cooking tips to eating restaurant quality meals on a tight budget through recipes I've learned in my travels and also my West African and Southern American roots. This is The Counter. Hi, I'm James K. Holder II. Some of you may know me as Sir James II. I'd like to welcome you back to The Counter. This is our forum to discuss food access and issues that might prevent us from having healthy and affordable meals available for our families. With the holiday season approaching, I want to do a very special episode celebrating Friendsgiving. Today, what I'm going to do for you is take three of my family's classic dishes and just update them, including a cauliflower mac and cheese, a squash and cornbread dressing recipe, and also my special fancy deviled eggs. So without further ado, let's get started on the first recipe. I want to get a pot of water boiling for my deviled eggs. And so I'm going to just do eight eggs, set those here, place them on high. I'm going to grab my apron and get started on this cauliflower. I'm going to break it into bite-sized florets. What we want is sort of a piece just like this so that when they roast, they're roasting uh, evenly and I get a nice browning on this when I go to do it. I've got my oven on 425. In our large mixing bowl, we are going to take our cauliflower. We are going to generously season this with some salt and pepper. And then lastly, just a hint of nutmeg. Cut a little more oil on this. I really want a generous uh, covering of olive oil on this cauliflower because that way I know I'm going to get the browning that I'm looking for in this dish. Place this on my baking sheet. I'm going to go ahead and put this right into the oven and on the lowest rack. That's going to go into the oven for about 35 minutes. My zucchini and squash are going to go in for about 30 to 25 minutes. So that'll give me some time to prepare these ingredients. I'll take these down. Beautiful zucchini. I love zucchini. I'm going to do like a, a sort of a large dice because I want to roast these and I want to keep some of the texture intact. And I can hear that my uh, eggs are coming to a boil over there. So you know what that means. I'm going to start my timer for six minutes. And when that's over, I will know I have to come and take my eggs out. Now, um, this is going to be our squash dressing. Squash is going to be prominently featured. And so I, pr I want a little bit more of the yellow squash flavor than I want in the zucchini. The squash, I want to be the star here. I'm going to salt it. I'm going to add some pepper to this and just again coat this very liberally with some extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to toss it onto a single layer. So I just want to make sure that that's all in there. I can already hear my cauliflower beginning to come together. That's my timer. And take these eggs and bring them right over to the sink. Now, this recipe is sort of inspired by my Aunt Georgie. I'm going to just modify it a bit. When I was at the market, I found some beautiful sage. And I've got in here about a quart of stock. So I'm just going to put this here and let it steep in my stock and come up to a rolling simmer. While that happens, I'm going to prepare the dry ingredients for my cornbread dressing. And that is primarily going to consist of cornbread and also bread. This dish is also inspired by my grandmother, Ruth. I got this recipe. I called my mom up and asked her to tell me specifically how to make Grandma Ruth's, Grandmommy's uh, cornbread. 
always done in a cast iron skillet. So I'm just gonna take half of that loaf of cornbread and I'm going to begin to just take it down. Now, this is gonna look like big pieces, but I love that I have that dark crust there at the bottom. That's why you wanna use the cast iron skillet, folks. There's no substitute for that. So, mmm. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now here we have a large heaping bowl of cornbread that we're gonna use for our dressing. Here I've got a baguette that is one day old. And so I'm just gonna take this bread down and you can hear it. You can hear that crunch from that crusty French bread and that's exactly what we're looking for. This size here is about what I'm looking for. I'm actually just gonna take the same pot, boiling water, and set this right over here on high heat. I'm gonna start preparing my ingredients that I'm gonna saute in my dressing. For that, I've got a little bit of fennel. I don't want too much fennel in this. It's a little bit of a harder ingredient. So I'm just gonna, just gonna start very thin. And that's about all I want from that, that bulb. Now, we are going to add to that fennel some celery. I'm going to split this stock down the middle. This will help me dice it more easily so it's not rolling around on my board. I'm just gonna do somewhat of a fine chop on this. Red bell pepper, one of my favorite ingredients. It can be a little pricey, but it'll add a little bit of sweetness to this dish and also some wonderful color. So take that little membrane out. I only want about half of it. Uh, so in a little while, I'm gonna invite two of my friends over uh, from within the neighborhood, very close friends, Asohe and George. And they have invited me to their house for Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, every single year. So it's actually great to have them over. We'll just kind of sample what we have here. I'm looking for about equal parts of celery and onion for this. So this onion, this particular onion size will give me what I'm looking for. I've noticed that I can smell our roasted vegetables that they are prepared and ready. So let's take out our zucchini. Got some nice, wonderful color on this zucchini. Remember our cauliflower went in just a little bit before and I was going for some char, a little bit of darkness on here and I definitely achieved that. Our pasta water is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and salt and oil this water. For this, I'm just gonna make it classic and stick with our macaroni. This is gonna boil for about nine minutes to al dente. So I'm gonna set that there. In nine minutes, my pasta will be ready and I will start sauteing our vegetables for our dressing. And to this pan, I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I started on medium heat. I'm gonna start sauteing these and uh, I want to just basically get these to the point where they are translucent. So we're gonna take that whole small onion, place that in there. We've got our celery and our fennel. And last but not least, our red bell pepper. And with this, I want this to retain a little bit of its texture. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna let the, the pot start and then I'm gonna add this in because this will take a little bit less time to soften than our fennel and our celery will. I'm going to strain our pasta and get it ready for our casserole. Uh, I definitely want to make sure that this is cooked al dente because it's going to continue to cook a little bit in the oven. All right, so I'm ready to assemble my squash dressing. And now I have all of my ingredients here. I've got my squash prepared. I've got two eggs that I'm gonna use. I've got my sauteed aromatics, my onion, my celery, my fennel, my red, onion, my red bell pepper. I've got my breadcrumbs and I've got my stock and some fresh herbs. I wanna start with my grandmother's cornbread recipe. Gonna add sort of a handful of that. And I'm kind of just eyeballing based on how much uh, of the squash flavor I have. I want to go ahead and these have been uh, cooled down a little bit. You definitely want to cool this down before you handle it with your dressing because you don't want to add your raw egg scrambled in and have it sort of begin to uh, scramble the egg. So 
that and your stock, I'm going to add all of that in. I'm going to add all of my roasted squash in. And this is going to give us that flavor that we want, that really fall harvest flavor that we associate with Thanksgiving. And you can already see all those colors building in there and the flavors. I can smell it right here. It is wonderful. Now, to this, I want to add some fresh herbs. And these have been rinsed some parsley. Uh, we're going to add to this some of our fennel fronds. Just going to kind of scrape these off. And add it right on, just right into the bowl. I'm going to also add to this a generous helping of poultry seasoning. I'm going to start with a little bit of dressing at a time. And what I want to do is add it sort of incrementally so that I can let it build into and start to reconstitute the bread that's in my mix. I don't necessarily want it to all rush in and soap, like be, be a bread soup. And this looks pretty good already, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna let this sit for a second while I uh, start to work on my eggs. Take a little small fork, beat this together. Now I'm going to taste this for salt before I add my eggs and then that way I'll know once it's baked that it's going to come out correctly. But let's see. The texture is about where I want it. I know I'm going to add just a little bit more stock before I put this in. Let's see. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got everything in there I want. The salt level is very good. Uh, this is just perfect. But oh, those wonderful herbs. I can taste those all in there. Gonna add just a pinch more salt. Add a bit more of our stock here, just to get it all going, because it's gonna, it's gonna dry out just a little bit in the oven. But this is looking exactly like I want it to look. So, woo! This is perfect. <laughs> this is exactly what I want. Now, I might not add all of this egg. I'm gonna start and add, well, yeah, just about all of it. I'll leave it a little bit in the bowl. So what I'm looking for is that, that egg to come in and act as a binder. I don't wanna overwork this dough. That's why I'm using a spatula. I've definitely got some full crunchy pieces in here. And I really just wanna make sure that that texture is still there. So I'm going to add a handful more of just the breadcrumbs that hadn't been worked in because I, I really want some full sort of pieces in there. There we go. This is ready for the oven. I'm going to put this in the oven, center rack, 375 for about 25 minutes. So now with our dressing in the oven, it's time to start working on the cheese sauce for our cauliflower and macaroni and cheese bake. And so therefore we gotta start with the cheese. And I have four fantastic cheeses reserved for this recipe. And so the first one I'm gonna start with is a sweet cheddar. This is about half a pound, but I'm gonna definitely start, grate this. And that is a beautiful pile of sweet cheddar cheese. So next, I am going with some smoked Gouda. And the recipe that I'm using for this entire dish is basically an adaptation of my mom's famous macaroni and cheese, and just with a little bit of an update. And with to that, I'm going to add some mozzarella. It's gonna help give me that creamy texture that I want when I make my sauce. I am going to reserve our Parmigiano Reggiano for the end. So what I'm going to do is start by making a bechamel. I'm heating up my pan on medium heat. I've got my milk ready. I've got my butter ready. My cheese is also ready. And I've got my cauliflower and my pasta noodles already cooked and ready to go. Let me prepare two tablespoons of flour. This is just all-purpose flour, nothing special. So let's start the bechamel. Let's start our butter there. 
And I'm just gonna take one little clove of garlic and I'm going to microplane this in to my pan. This is just gonna, you know, this is sort of like bastardizing this classic French sauce, you know, uh, because it's really just supposed to be butter and flour and milk. But I'm going to amp up the flavor just a little bit with a little bit of garlic, and I'm gonna use my wooden, my trusty, dusty wooden spoon to build this sauce to what I want it to be. Now remember, we're supposed to use about the same amount of butter to the amount of flour. So since our butter's in there, I have two and a half tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna add two and a half tablespoons of butter. I'm going to add some of this flour, not all of it. I'm gonna start it actually pretty quickly. Half. Reduce this heat just a little bit. And I wanna cook this flour. I want it to start turning to this brown color. We're building our roux here. This is gonna be a thickening agent for our sauce. I'm putting this together really quickly, you guys. So what I wanna do is go ahead and add this milk in to our roux. And it is going to immediately start to thicken. You can see it there. And I don't want this roux and this sauce to break. So I'm gonna keep whisking it. So just a little bit of nutmeg to this sauce while it's still coming together. And I just wanna add a few of one of my favorite necessary ingredients and add to that some of this fresh Parmesan cheese. Now, this is going to just make this whole dish sing. So we're grating that fresh Parmesan right into the panko. And I'm not trying to cook this, but I just want to get a little coating with some butter. Our sauce here is thickening up and I'm multitasking a bit here. So you see our sauce is thickening up and it is just ready. The way you test this sauce, you can take the back of a spoon, like so, and just take a spoon and you want to see if it holds that mark there. Also a good opportunity to taste for salt. And so I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt, but not too much because remember, there's cheese, there's salt in our cheese already. I'm gonna add a little cracked pepper. I'm gonna reduce the heat and I want to slowly melt our cheeses into this pan. I'm gonna let this stuff come together and start melting into our bechamel. So once your cheese melts into your bechamel, that's when you formed a Mornay sauce. And you see you've got this beautiful, white, luscious, creamy sauce. I'm gonna multitask. I'm gonna to toss this in here. And I really just wanna almost immediately pull it off the heat. I'm going to use our little spoon. And I'm going to coat and toss around our Parmesan and bread and panko breadcrumb mixture. I just wanna get this coated in butter so that when I add it to my dish, at the top, my topping, it will just, it will be perfect and it will just add to that layer of crunch and flavor that we want. So as you can see, our sauce is building, it is coming together and it looks magnificent, y'all. This looks amazing. It's exactly what I'm looking for in a sauce. And it is nice and thick. Woo! I'm going to take my dressing out of the oven. This is our cornbread dressing, y'all. This is what it looks like. It looks like the holidays. I wanna put equal parts pasta. I wanna put our cauliflower, our roasted cauliflower right in. Nice and creamy. It is coming together exactly the way that I want it to. And all I wanna do now is eat it. I'm kidding. All I wanna do now is just toast and sprinkle our, our topping right on. I think I could be able to handle this with my hand. It wasn't a very hot dish. Now start in the center, just fan this out. Our panko breadcrumb topping. 
This is gonna set in the oven to bake for about 25 minutes. We've got our boiled and peeled eggs, smoked trout, fancy caviar, not gonna, well, the price is on here. Caviar is obviously very expensive. It is a bit pricey, but you know, it's the holiday. So we got some chive, we've got some hot sauce, we've got some Dijon mustard. We've also got the Dijonese that I made from scratch yesterday, and I'll show you how to make that in a demo. But this is our thick, homemade mayonnaise and it is better than anything you can buy in a store as you can see it's holding its shape it is not broken i could hold it over my head i'm not gonna held it over my head <laughs> i believe in i believe in it before i even get into this process i'm going to check on my cauliflower and macaroni and cheese bake which is awesome y'all Lovely, that Parmesan panko crust at the top has come together and I'm just gonna let this rest over here on this trivet. Okay, so we've got our knife, got our water. I just wanna make a quick cut right down the center of this egg, cut it right in half. I'm gonna start mashing this a bit. I'm going to add in some of our fresh Dijonese to that some Dijon mustard. Oh, there's a knock at the door. I think my friends George and Asahi are here. What's going on? Hey. Hello. Hi. Y'all look nice. <laughs> you just walked in the front. Pretty good. Pretty good. Good to see you. Was there any particular kind you like or wanted? Chardonnay. Yeah, we're Chardonnay things. Chardonnay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I have a Chardonnay. I do have a Chardonnay up there. <laughs> I do not recommend standing on your countertops. Yeah, absolutely. But it is what it is. Going in. What I'm doing here is I'm taking this uh, Chardonnay, which should be chilled. Uh, this is, I'm going to pour about half a bottle. So it's going to give me 325 milliliter pours for my uh, white wine glasses. And so I'm going to chill this using my little spoon, my little cocktail stirrer. And this will just take a few moments. It'll be ready and at temperature for you and your guests. See, my students often think they're not going to use their math skills in adulthood. Well, you got to know right. it. Cheers. Okay, cheers. 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 All right. To Thanksgiving. Yes. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to finish up these double eggs. And so I'm going to take just a little bit of this smoked trout, not too much, and I'm going to flake it off. Mm. And I'm going to include it mm. in our devil egg recipe. That is delicious. And it's so mild. Like you think it's trout, you think it's going to be like really fishy, mm. but it's not. It's like that smoky. Yeah. It has a little um, like smoked pork taste to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. It's really good. So I've gotten this down to a pretty fine uh, brine, so and I'm going to just sort of place this right on into my mm -hmm. mix. Oh wow, that's beautiful. There we go. I'm gonna put these in the fridge for just a second to chill, and then um, I'm gonna set up the table over here, and then we will resume our taste test. Okay. Sounds good. Let's start with the squash dressing. Mm. Mm, looks good. Thank you, dear God, for the food we're about to receive for nourishment of our body. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so Can't eat a bite. Again. <laughs> mm. Mm. Very good. Mm. Yeah. I love squash and zucchini. Mm. I do too. I can taste your grandmother's recipe. I can taste cornbread. The cornbread in uh huh. Oh yeah. And when you do it with a cast iron pan, the bottom is all nice and brown. And, mm -hmm. taste, and you can taste those crispy edges in here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy with this. And it's yeah. light. It's delicious. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Dry and heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is a keeper. Definitely a keeper. Now, this is a rendition of my mom's macaroni and cheese recipe. And again, please. And also, there's roasted cauliflower and macaroni. I can smell the good. Very good. Mm, that's delicious. 
That texture of the crust. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That crust is there. That the chard, um, I roasted the cauliflower. I think the brown edges on it. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what I think the flavor is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's delicious. So y'all host a lot. Like y'all do, these are the, the toast of the town. <laughs> really not of the block, if nothing else. Because y'all have an event at your house at least twice a month. What are like some pointers for starting out hosting? Um, I think keeping in mind what everybody likes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, while at the same time being mindful of your own personality. So I don't like a lot of people in my kitchen. If you want to bring something, fine, you can bring something. <laughs> um, but just in terms of being in the kitchen and prepping and while I'm kind of doing my thing, it's not something I enjoy. Right. So just being aware of your temperament in that way. Okay. Um, and I think it's that old platinum rule, golden rule thing. You know, they say treat others how you want to be treated, but I think it's more important to treat other people how they want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to combine those two things together. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Then, yeah. I'm the drink pourer. <laughs> so um, I make sure that all the glasses stay full. And if no one asks for a drink, I'll just check in and see if they want one anyway. So like mm -hmm. you two have found like a system where you sort of pair off and you know like what the responsibilities are. You mm -hmm. divvy that up for the host thing. Mm -hmm. Not coming from a big family. Um, I had no idea the strategic curatorial skills necessary <laughs> to accommodate that many people. That everyone needs somewhere to sit. Yeah. And so many people that if someone doesn't like stay in a hotel, you need to be aware that everyone needs to have somewhere to sleep. Curating the space right. to accommodate. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, when you host the experience that you provide is a reflection of you in really every mm -hmm. way. And I think a lot of people don't a lot of people don't take that the weight of that seriously, mm -hmm. and I, I can sincerely say that y'all do. So I'm kind of learning a bit from you. So the last thing to taste is the deviled eggs. I'm gonna go head first with the the one that has the caviar in there. It's sparkling. Mm. 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 That's really good. The trout, mm -hmm. like it's it's more flavorful than the caviar, and that sounds you know that's crazy to me, but it's it's good, it's delicious. So maybe what we, what you discover is that like if you want a flavor or something unique, mm -hmm. you don't even have to go for the caviar. Like if you want to, mm. because like you're right, I can taste the caviar there, mm -hmm. but that trout is really the star. It is mm -hmm. the, the highlight. I feel like the both of you, like you cook. Mm -hmm. I actually don't cook. I've got about six things that I can make. Okay. And um, the older we've gotten, the more I realize all those things are bad for us. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, so it's so sad. Well, um, like, so I used to love my fried catfish. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work for us anymore. We just, we just can't eat too it. It's grease. just too much grease, you know? This table and this discussion mm -hmm. around food in our community. We, mm -hmm. we shop at the same grocery stores. Mm -hmm. We face the same challenges <laughs> when we go to the stores on the weekends. And we are continually sold this quick and easy, mm -hmm. oh, just mm -hmm. fry it, it's faster, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it tastes great. At some point, it catches up to you. It does. And your body begins to tell you so oh, yeah. what this mm -hmm. is trying to do. It's just kind of present a way you know, if people, some people don't cut back on their carbs. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cut that in half with some cauliflower, roasted cauliflower. Yeah. Very good. Some people are trying to cut back, you know, dressing, it is what it is. Well, it's interesting you say that because I would make my dressing from like homemade cornbread. Okay. And the first time I made it, George didn't really like it because he was used to stove top stuffing. Right, right. <laughs> and oh, so right. I grew up on stove yeah. top stuffing. So now yeah. I combine the two. It's still not quite all made from the homemade, you know, cornbread source, but it's not even mm -hmm. half stove top anymore. But yeah. it was what he was used to. I, I look at what that what's in that box. It's dried breadcrumbs. It's seasoning packet, mm -hmm. which probably has way A too much salt. salt. Oh yes. What's interesting is that we grow up with this 
this idea of what something tastes like, and it's based on a fast food mm-hmm. packaging, oh, yeah. a processed mm-hmm. food packaging, mm-hmm. and sometimes we have to do some unprogramming. Like, mm-hmm. We have to do the work. Yeah. I'm really big into tomatoes, and I'm always like pushing people to try fresh mm-hmm. tomatoes because mm-hmm. I don't think people know what fresh tomatoes, what tomatoes taste really like. Yeah. No, you're right. Because I would say I did. I would say I didn't like tomatoes. Yeah. And then the dupe grew tomatoes in her garden. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. And then I loved those tomatoes. Yeah. I still don't really mess yeah. with tomatoes, but those tomatoes are very good. Yeah. But I wouldn't have known because the ones in the grocery store I don't like. Mm-mm. Right. And it's, yeah. you know, you realize when you start importing and shipping ingredients all across the world, mm-hmm. they're not growing and shipping and selling to you based on what's the fre- most fresh and the best mm-hmm. flavor. Mm-hmm. It's the one that can Keep last, the long has yeah. the best shelf value <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and looks the prettiest yeah. on mm-hmm. the shelf, but it really ultimately isn't the best for you mm-hmm. or the best tasting. Thank you two for joining me for dinner, and I'd like to thank you all out there for joining me at the counter. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I want you to retweet this and repeat this. And catch future episodes of The Counter weekly at www.thecountertv.com. So let That's me ask delicious. You, of the three, each of you tell me which one you would have me bring. Uh, I'd have you bring the stuff in, mm. the dressing, yeah. Okay. I would have you bring the deviled eggs <laughs> with the caviar. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, I can see that being a hit. I yeah. can definitely see that being a hit.